welcome back to my channel guys i know it's been quite some time but it's all worthwhile because i'm sitting here with mr julius Mwale. mr julius Mwale, please introduce yourself to our audience so that they know exactly who you are thank you thank you so my name is julius Mwale. i'm uh, the person behind uh, Mwale medical and technology city a two billion dollar uh, green city uh, in uh, Western Kenya, and I'm also one of the uh, financiers behind Econ City uh, in Senegal. Absolutely amazing! Like I can't even believe that I'm sitting here with you, and I've had such an amazing morning here with you, just learning more about your background, thank you, and learning more about how you have even gotten to the point where he is invested into a medical technology city. It, it is your city, Thank it's you. named after you, Thank MMTC, you. but then you also have Akon City. So guys, we have so much to get into today. We're gonna talk about MMTC, how that got started. We also wanna know more about Mr. Julius Mwale, right? Yes, yes. I mean, it's, it's a lot to learn because Mr. Julius Mwale is not only the owner of MMTC, but he's a billionaire. Yes, a billionaire. So it's it's just a lot going on, and Thank it's you. absolutely amazing. Thank you. And then not to mention Akon City. We all know Akon. We all love him. And he has a city that he's building in Senegal. So we want to know more about that and how you're invested in that. So stick around for more, and we'll get right into it. For you to even come up with this concept of MMTC, take us back to where that came from. How, how were you able to get the money needed to invest in this city and what's also happening right now with MMTC? Yeah, so I came, I came in the United States in uh, 2001. Uh, so I came from Kenya and I was in the military uh, working on the technology. And at uh, the time, within the government of the time, I got into issues with my technology. And so I came in the U.S. for political asylum. Mm -hmm. So when I arrived in New York City, it was before 9-11. And so I stayed in a homeless shelter uh, on Woods Island in Manhattan. I was there for about a year, and then after I got uh, political asylum, I left the shelter and started my company, uh, SBA Technologies, which was a biometrics company that came up to protect the online banking networks uh, from terrorist attacks or from hacking during the post-911, you know, era. Mm -hmm. And so with coming up with this company, which is like, wow, we can't just let that pass us either. Biometrics technology, yes. that yes. sounds like really like futuristic. Yes. And so just in simple terms, what exactly does biometric technology do? Yeah, so, so at the time, uh, people used a username and password. You know, this was in 2001, 2002 to log on to the Internet. And so I invented uh, biometrics to be part of the two-factor authentication. Yeah, to, to have a username password, and then you either have a biometrics, uh, you have an image, you have a picture, or you have a code. Uh, so I invented biometrics to be the second factor, you know, authentication at that time. And so during uh, the 2001 to 2003 in the United States, biometrics was seen as very intrusive. Yeah, no one wanted to have their fingerprints, you know, taken by the computer or by the government or by anyone. Uh, so what I decided to do I invented uh, what they called the system and method for the string-based biometric authentication, meaning that uh, you take your thumb or your, your finger and then you select pieces, you know, points on the finger instead of taking an entire image. And then when you took those, uh, th those points, you could send that over the Internet and then be able to verify someone's identity yeah, instead of taking an entire image. So it was very, very, you know, uh, cutting edge. Uh, because you could send a small packet of data, small packet of information over the Internet, uh, you know, with, w without, you know, having to, to use a bigger memory space of sending an image on the other side. And so that was revolutionary in 2003. And then, of course, you know, the two-factor authentication was affected by Congress in 2006. Wow. Yeah. So with accomplishing that, mm -hmm. you were able to get closer to your vision. Yes. And we want to know what exactly is your vision? Yeah, my vision is uh, transforming uh, lives. You know, uh, uh, how, how many of these uh, people that we have that are in poverty or that are living without, you know, fulfillment, how many of them uh, will I be able to basically transform their lives 
and be able to pull either uh, them out of poverty or make their lives better. So my vision is that uh, how can I transform, you know, lives for people that need to be basically, you know, uh, need to be helped to live, you know, much more comfortable, you know, lifestyles. And so in what ways would you say you are changing these lives? In what ways would you say you have already started to accomplish your, your vision? Yeah, by, by the end of the decade, you know, in 2008, 2009, uh, we had uh, uh, been very successful with technology and we invested about uh, 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 $4 million, uh, you know, to do a feasibility study uh, with a, a big U.S. company. Went to Africa, grew up in the village. I was like, hey, I'm going to educate people in the village. I'm going to basically pay for one person, one child per family to go to college wow. and then come back and educate, you know, educate, you know, everyone else in, into that family. But, you know, the study showed that you had 180,000 uh, people within the region of East Africa going to India every year for medical treatment. There were no hospitals. So I was like, hey, there's an investment opportunity. Maybe I shall invest $2 billion uh, to build a medical city that will be able to treat those people that go to India every year yep. and then develop, you know, these, these communities uh, to make sure that now I can transform them and achieve my vision. Yep. So you saw the need, yeah. you feel the need, yes. but it's also fulfilling your vision exactly. and it's helping people all over the world, but exactly. especially right here in Kenya. Exactly. Whew. I am just like lost for words. Like it's just, it's an amazing Thank you. vision. Thank you. you coming from such humble beginnings. Yes and having trials and tribulations within your life. Yeah. I know there were moments where you maybe thought something wouldn't happen. Yeah. The yeah. dream that you imagined mm -hmm. wouldn't come true. Mm -hmm. What moment actually inspired you to know or keep pushing to get closer to your vision? Uh, the moment that got me to push, you know, closer into my vision, yeah, was when our country uh, got into uh, issues with uh, development yeah, back in the 19. Uh, 90s. So we were growing up in Africa, grew up in Kenya, and the time, you know, there were tough economic conditions. Uh, we didn't have good health care. We didn't have good uh, uh, schools. We didn't have good roads. And so, you know, I decided, look, you know, this is an opportunity for me to come up, uh, lead the generation to be able to change the entire development in the region and give back to the community. Have sure, make sure that we have a community where everybody that lives in the community is benefiting they they have access to education, have access to health care, and we all live together as a, a one community and not just a successful individual. Oh, Mr. Mwale, with you being a billionaire and you're the first billionaire I'm sitting next to. Thank you. Thank so you. I'm honored. Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> I'm you. absolutely honored. But there are so many people out here that are struggling. Yeah. You you've lived in Kenya, you you live in New York and all over the world. Yeah. You have seen the struggle. Yeah. Yeah. So for someone who wants to attain millions in their life, yeah. maybe even become a billionaire, but they're working a regular job, they're yeah. not sure how to even get in that mind space. Yeah. What is the mind space that you need to be in? Uh, you need to have uh, a vision. So to be successful in life, everyone needs to have a vision. And a vision is something about what you want to do uh, for your life, for legacy. What do you want to change? Not only uh, putting food on the table, it's something that you want to do for a community. Uh, you can say, look, I want, to, I want to make this community safe. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a fireman. Yeah, you know, you start working on that vision of, you know, how to protect the community. How am I going to do my job uh, to be able to basically bring safety in this community? So you don't need to have a lot of money to be able to be successful or to achieve, achieve your vision. A vision starts very small. And there may be bigger vision. My vision is how many people can I pull out of poverty? How many people can I transform their lives? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can't see myself as successful until I've pulled a million of, a millions of people out of poverty. Yeah, so vision is important. Uh, start with a vision, however small it is, yeah, you'll be able to succeed your life and live a fulfilled you know, lifestyle. To be able to begin with an end in mind, so in life. So you say, hey, look, this is where I want to be when I'm 30, or I want to be where I'm 60, mm -hmm. or this is where I want to be when I'm 90 or 100 years old. Mm -hmm. So you start from there, and then you petition. You petition priorities in life. You say, what, what priority do I have now? So if you're younger, for example, 
uh, you can begin with education. You can say, here, I'm going to go to school, I'm going to finish my uh, high school, get my diploma, I'm going to go to college and be able to study and then build skills. But networks are very important. So creating networks, you know, networks make up about 90% of your success. Uh, so money is not uh, enough or money is not important if you don't have a network. If you have a network, you easily get money. For example, uh, people believe that banks are the only place or financial institutions are the only place to get money. No, you could get money from other places other than financial institutions. For example, you could, you know, create an idea, come up with an, an idea. Yeah, you know, look for clients for that. That's what I did. I looked for customers. And then when they give me a letter to say that, you know, I'm interested into looking at your idea, and then I'll be able to go and raise money based on the idea that I have that I've, I've been able to convince, you know, clients to accept. Mm. Yeah. So have a vision and be convincing. Exactly. <laughs> you have to have some type of charm about yourself, charisma. Exactly. I would say, exactly. especially. It's passion. Yeah, passion. And passion. Yes. So your yes. passion to bring that charisma out. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. So it's vision. And to get it successful, you need passion to be able to get through it. Some people who may be watching this video right now, mm -hmm. who's passionate about what we're talking about, yeah. dealing with Akon City, yeah. dealing with being an African-American that wants to go back to Africa, wants yeah. to find out their roots, just yes. like I did. I've yeah. been there now uh, three times and I've loved every single moment yes. of being able to feel closer to my roots. Yeah. yeah. How can they get involved in what you guys have going on with Akon City? Yeah, so so what we've done, uh, uh, there's a $2 billion Mwale Medical and Technology City, MMTC, built up in Western Kenya. Uh, and this MMTC is a pilot a uh, project for Econ City. For example, uh, Econ has a coin, you know, is using the digital coin, the, the cryptocurrency, uh, to be able to, to do transactions in Africa. Uh, a coin, the cryptocurrency, is now in use at MMTC, at Mwale Medical and Technology City. So starting from MMTC, uh, you can come in and be able to basically uh, put it to Econ City, uh, invest in Econ City. For example, you could buy a home if you need a uh, place to stay for Akon City. There are homes that are available for you. There are jobs that are available uh, in every department. For example, uh, MMTC today has a hospital. It's uh, the largest hospital in the world. It's, it's called Hamptons Hospital. Uh, it's uh, finishing now for 5,000 beds. It was opened up in 2019. And it's already treated over 21,000 people. But it's gonna be treating 20, oh, 12,000 people uh, you know, every single day. And it's opening up at uh, Econ City. And as it gets into Econ City, uh, it will be hiring people for jobs. So if you want, you're a nurse, you're a doctor, you're an accountant, you're a lawyer, you can apply for jobs you know, at Econ City yeah, into this hospital. And you'll be able to work there and buy your house and then you know, uh, move there as an African-American. And then, of course, be able, to, uh, uh, be able to study the culture from the continent of Africa. There is a place for you. Thank you.